are standing in the vestibule on the outside porch of St. Paul's Chapel in the breezeway between St. Paul's and Low Library, which is off in this direction. I'm standing in front of one of the large columns, which is made of the Salem limestone from South Central Indiana, which is the trim stone on most of the Mead McKimmon white brick plus limestone structures, which populate the classical part of the Columbia campus. The facing stone on low is almost entirely of this material, and all the other brick plus limestone buildings use this as the, uh, the tan facing stone. What I'd like to show you is that this is not a featureless rock. When this rock was quarried, it was absolutely a brilliant white, mostly from the marks of the tools of the cutting instruments that were used to remove this as blocks from the quarry in Indiana where this came. And if you're to look on the back side of this column, you'll find it's a uniform and impressive material with no obvious microstructure to it. On the other hand, this side of the column, which has been etched by the weather for quite a number of years now, begins to show interesting microstructure. For instance, there are a number of layers which are running like this, which are truncated against a bunch of layers which are running like that. Those are individual layerings in the sedimentation process that was taking place underwater in a bunch of shallow tidal channels in the Salem limestone that was being deposited. The particles which are being sloshed around in the channels and put into the layers are fossils of comminuted bryozoans, brachiopods, crinoids, and many other critters that lived in the Paleozoic era. This material in a warm, shallow carbonate bank was being deposited in a sedimentary environment with a normal stratigraphy. Young stuff on the top, old stuff on the bottom. You can tell younger from older because younger stuff truncates older stuff. So the layering here is truncated by layering here. You'll notice, of course, that the layers are not nearly horizontal, so it's very clear that what started life as a more or less horizontal layer, which is running up and down on this column, should have been in a position like this when it was deposited on the earth uh, in the Mississippi. I'm now just outside the vestibule of the porch of St. Paul's Chapel, standing in front of this brass lampstand, which is supported by a little pediment with some fancy scroll work going down its front. What's visible on the semi-horizontal scrolled surface are a series of parallel tracks, and in fact those are exactly that. Those are tracks of worms that burrow through the sediment, getting their nutrition from the carcasses of all the fragmented bryozoans and brachiopods and crinoids that were the death assemblage that were the particles that made up the sediment. <laughs>